Next, another important we can say category of food crops, those are millets. So, you know very well that now government of India is actively promoting the, uh, we can say, consumption of millets because of the rich nutrients and the micronutrients that are available in the millets. So, they are being promoted on, under the Sri Anna, under the name of Sri Anna. Right. Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus AS. Right. Today is our 42nd day and we are studying today, we will study about the crops in India. Right. So our mo major focus in this class will be about the crops in India. However, we will briefly see about the uh, characteristic features of Indian agriculture and also before that we will also see the we can say types of agriculture right so this is also very important area there have been many questions previously also so try to focus and gain as much knowledge as possible right so agriculture in india so <coughs> as you all know it is still the primary we can say primary sector uh, primary sector i mean so when we discuss uh, when we divide the we can say econ economic sector into three categories primary secondary and tertiary sectors so agriculture comes in the primary sector so that is one sense and also we uh, what i meant to say is majority of the people see more than 50 percent of the people still dependent on agriculture i mean more than 50 percent of the fa families are still dependent on the uh, agriculture approximately we can say the last available trends so approximately 55 percent of the people are dependent on agriculture right so we can say i mean agriculture still it is a major aspect in india most of the people majority of the people are dependent on india however the contribution to gdp its contribution to gdp uh, is approximately around we can say 15 to 16 percent this number uh, varies uh, every year after the we can say the <coughs> uh, indices will come so approximately 15 to 16 percent it cont contributes towards the gdp so because of this reason there are many problems in the agriculture sector however in this lecture we do not go into the problems when i when i discuss the main topics we will go in detail and discuss the problems related to agriculture for the prelims aspect we try and focus on the major crops in the indian agriculture and also uh, some of the characteristic features of the indian agriculture so this uh, this much is sufficient for the prelims perspective right so before that we will understand a brief about the indian agriculture and also what are the types of agriculture right right so agriculture it remains cornerstone of cornerstone of indian economy cornerstone means so the agriculture or we can say developments in the agriculture they decide the other two sectors right if we can say agriculture is performing well agriculture is performing well so this acts i mean whatever the raw material is provide uh, required or the strength that is required for the secondary secondary sector this is provided by the we can say primary sector so these two if these two sectors perform well agriculture and secondary then the tertiary sector tertiary sector basically that is the service sector that is also performs well so agriculture is in this way called as the because of this reason backbone of Indian economy. So agriculture is considered as the backbone of Indian economy because the performance of the other two sectors is dependent on the agriculture. So for example, if agriculture is not well due to we can say for example poor monsoon. So there I mean when the agriculture is not performing well there will also be a slump in the secondary sector and the tertiary sectors because uh, majority of the population or people are dependent on the 
agriculture sector only so because of this reason it is known as the backbone of indian economy right so supporting approximately 70% so this data varies now we can say 55% of the people are dependent on agriculture so <coughs> so this much uh, population it is providing livelihood directly and indirectly right so it continues to be a crucial sector uh, meeting basic needs of humans animals while serving as a significant source of raw materials for uh, numerous agro based indir- industries so this is what i was saying the primary sector not only supports people and uh, livelihoods of the people but also it provides a raw material for the many agro based industries that are considered in the secondary sector all right so india's geographical diversity it offers favorable conditions for agriculture including expansive plains we have seen indo gangetic plains indo gangetic plains and also the plains of coastal plains coastal plains these plains extensively support the agriculture in india right so it has extensive growing seasons so basically if we have three seasons we will study them uh, uh, kharif season kharif season rabi season and the jayad seasons so agriculture it can be divided into three seasons we will study about them so it, india supports three seasons we can say it is an extended season we can say because in most mostly only one or maximum two crops are possible in other countries so where the irrigation is uh, dedicated uh, dedicated irrigation is available we will see generally two crops and where the agriculture is mostly rain fed we will see only one season but india in some regions we can cultivate three seasons so that's, that is also one of the peculiar feature of indian agriculture right right the indian agriculture can be divided uh, i mean it we can differently uh, divide the agriculture into different types so the basis on the basis is on various basis is basis is so the first such classification is subsistence com- uh, farming and the commercial farming so subsistence and the commercial are we can uh, divide indian agriculture into these two broader categories so subsistence farming basically means agriculture or cultivation for subsistence subsistence so subsistence means generally to have a lovely livelihood based on the agriculture so there the uh, there are no commercial purposes are involved so whatever the produce that is that is coming from the we can say agriculture or farming it is used for consumption right it is used for consumption so broadly it is known as a subsistence agriculture so majority of the farmers in india they practice subsistence agriculture mostly to live to lead their lives they are completely dependent on agriculture there, there is no or minimal commercial purpose is involved right so majority of the farmers as you all know one statistic says that approximately 86% of the people are they are small and marginal farmers 86% of the people are small and marginal farmers so small and marginal farmers are small farmers those who have uh, the we can say land holding less than or equal to less than or equal to 1 hectare so these people these farmers who have up to 1 hectare of land they are called as small farmers <coughs> sorry marginal farmers and those who have those who have less than or equal to 2 hectares they are called as the small farmers so approximately 86% of the farmers they are either small or marginal farmers so this is also because they have very less uh, land at their disposal so only subsistence farming is for uh, possible for those kind of farmers right so because of this reason majority of the farmers in india are practicing subsistence farming primarily uh, primarily for their own consumption right so production is consumed by the farmers and their families with little or no surplus for sale right land holdings are small and fragmented and cultivation techniques are primitive so basically they will be using 
uh, we can say animal driven plows animal driven plows they will use and whatever the technical uh, techniques they use for example if irrigation we will say they will use the primitive flood irrigation type so for the harvesting also mostly they engage manual labor manual labor not only for uh, harvesting but also for we can say weeding uh, removing the weeds also basically or majorly the manual labor uh, will be engaged right farmers mostly cultivate cereals oil seeds pulses vegetables and sugarcane so this is majorly for consumption so majority of them are we can say commercial uh, sorry food crops or food grain crops all right next we will see the opposite uh, we can say opposite uh, farming style that is commercial farming so it is for commercial purpose only commercial purpose means whatever the produce that is there on the farm so it will be cultivated for uh, the purpose of selling only not for the own sell, uh, own consumption even the farmer is uh, i mean uh, uh, having something uh, sto- storing for his own consumption that will be very less we can say up to 1 to 2% of the we can say total produce uh, the farmer will keep for his own consumption and rest of the production is for the sale in the market so that's that is the we can say major uh, main characteristic feature of commercial farming so it involves selling most of the produce in the market for profit right so here uh, if we see the features they use modern uh, inputs and as well as irrigation methods so irrigation methods like drip irrigation sprinkle irrigation so these uh, type of irrigation methods will be used modern inputs uh, will be used like hybrid seeds hybridized seeds mechanical plowing and engaging we can say machines to do the labor work etc and also there will be use of chemical fertilizers insecticides pesticides and high yielding varieties of seeds so major commercial crops if we see cotton jute sugarcane and groundnut right so if we see an example rice farming in haryana is mainly commercial due to if you see in other areas it is a subsistence crop rice but in haryana and uh, for that matter in punjab also so it is mainly a commercial crop due to the predominant wheat consumption uh it is the i mean the haryana and punjab region if you see, uh, see it is predominantly a wheat consuming region but however in the winter season or we can say in the kharif season kharif season so they are producing rice they are cultivating rice as a commercial crop right so in the if you see in the east and the northeastern states the rice rice cultivation is primarily a subsistence based uh, crop because so whatever the crop they are producing paddy crop or rice crop they use that for own consumption their own consumption right so same crop when it comes to western india it is a commercial crop and when it comes to eastern india and uh, for that matter in south india also it is a subsistence crop so try to ha- uh, try to be aware of these kind of differences also right another type of classification we can see that is intensive and extensive farming so this is subsistence and commercial farming this is one type of classification and this one intensive and extensive farming this is another type of classification so if we see the extensive uh, farming in the extensive farming large patches of land are used for cultivation resulting in high total production but low production per unit of land so the same crop will be uh, grown in extensive land areas so the production total production is high here but if we see the productivity production per hectare area that is uh, we can say lower so this type of farming is less common in india compared to temperate regions like usa canada and the former ussr so if we see the we can say siberian plains regions like ukraine russia etc if you see the countries their extensive farming is being practiced including you can say united states and australia also so in countries like we can say india and the majority of the countries in south asia 
South Asia, we will see, we can see intensive farming that we will see in the next slide. So if we see intensive farming, intensive farming focuses on achieving high production per unit of land. So it is commonly practiced in areas with limited land availability such as Japan and the state of Kerala in India. So if for example, if we take the country as a whole, majority of the farmers are practicing, we can say intensive cropping only. Incentive cropping only. Next, we can say further type of uh, classification is plantation croppings. Uh, we can classify the croppings as plantation croppings. So in plantation farming, a single cash crop is grown for sale. So this type of agriculture involves growing and processing a single cash crop purely for commercial purposes. So the best examples of these are coffee, tea, sugarcane, rubber also we can consider and also spices also we can consider as we can say plantation cropping right so another we can say classification we can see is mixed farming so mixed farming involves both crop cultivation and animal rearing so uh, try to remember this one mixed cropping is uh, we can say clubbing or mixing the farming with animal rearing animal rearing or you can say combining the agriculture and animal husbandry so another type of uh, classification also we can see that is intercropping intercropping so try to remember these differences because uh, once they have been asked in the examination also about the mix, mixed farming, there was a question. So intercropping is growing two or more crops on the same patch of the land, we can say in different rows. So for example, if we see in South India, so one, two, two to three rows will be of cotton crop, cotton crop, and one row it win, uh, in between will be of, we can say red gram. So again, uh, some lines of cotton crop will be there. Next, a line of red gram will be there. So this type of, we can say, farming is known as intercropping. So there are many examples we can take. Take many examples when it comes to intercropping. Uh, in between, as an intercrop, uh, on the in the patches of the normal crops, generally the legumes, the legumes will be used as an intercrop. Right. So try to remember these differences about the different types of agriculture. Right. Next, we will see some salient features of Indian agriculture. So mostly this is most relevant topic for the mains. However, we will briefly see and understand the characteristic features of the Indian agriculture. Right. First one is subsistence agriculture. I have seen. So majority of the farmers are they are uh, majority of the farmers are small and marginal farmers. So uh, because of that reason also they are most of the farmers in India are subsistence farmers or they are doing subsistence agriculture because uh, I mean the produce that is coming from the agriculture that is mostly used for self consumption. Right. Next is population pressure on the agriculture. So I have told approximately 55%, more than 50% of the people are dependent on agriculture. So if you include the directly dependent families also, so approximately 70% of the India's population directly or indirectly are dependent on the agriculture sector. So some farmers have, we can say land, and those people who do not have land, they work on the agricultural fields as agriculture laborers agriculture laborers so they work on the fields as the agricultural laborers and uh, they earn their daily wages in that way so they are dependent on the agriculture for their survival so in this way directly and indirectly approximately 70 percent of the people are dependent on agriculture so because of this reason population present is very high on the agriculture sector we can say and because of this reason also 
the uh one type of employment disguised unemployment Unem- unemployment is prevalent in uh, agriculture sector right try to remember these facts next is mechanization of uh, farming we can say in some areas some areas the mechanization has uh, i mean has taken place especially in the green revolution areas we can say so in areas like punjab and haryana even in the western uttar pradesh part so uh, mechanization has been made possible right so green revolution due to green revolution impact uh, significant that has about significant changes in the indian agriculture in the late uh, 1960s and early 1970s complete mechanization remains a distant goal even after 40 years sorry even after you can say 40 to 50 years so some parts have seen the mechanization of f agriculture so mechanization is not being uh, not uh, we are not able to implement this in the entire country because of one major reason that is because of the small land holding size small land holding size and even these small land holdings are further being fragmented so fragmentation of the land holdings is taking place so when the land holding is very small the we cannot uh, employ machines there so machine employment becomes we can say costlier or it is not possible to work with the machines in a small land patch so here uh, indianization of technology is required indianization of technology is required so whatever the machines we are trying to use on agriculture fields are they are we can say imported machines or imported technology the machines are very heavy they suit for the the one type of agriculture type we have seen intense uh, extensive agriculture so they machines big big machines are suitable for extensive farming in countries like usa russia australia ukraine uh, ukraine etc so those type of big machines are not suitable for india so we have to invest in research and development and we have to we can say uh, uh in, innovate the machines that uh, can be workable or usable on the small land patches or small land holdings right so th- in this area we have to do a lot of work right next uh, feature is characteristic feature is dependence on monsoon we have no so only we can say f- approximately 40% of india we can say the agricultural land it has assured irrigation assured irrigation means there is a uh, separate source of irrigation apart from we can say rainfall like bore wells uh, we can say open well or bore well or canal irrigation so only 40% of the la- agriculture area that has assured irrigation rest 60% of we can say agriculture area is dependent on rainfall right so this is also very we can say concerning area because we are uh, we all know very well monsoons are known for vagaries i mean in one area there will be floods and another area in the same country india there will be drought in an area so monsoons all are also notorious for early arrival or late arrival and also early withdrawal also so monsoons are known for their vagaries i mean one thing is they are not reliable so for that uh, even after that vagaries we are still dependent on the uh rainfall or monsoon rail for for growing crops in india in approximately 60% of the land area so you can think about how dicey uh for depending depending on the agriculture or dep- doing agriculture uh on the i mean on the assurance of monsoons right so this is also one of the characteristic feature next is variety of crops so india uh, known for growing variety of crops many crops are grown here so before the green revolution india is known for its variety or we can say diversity diversity of crops so there are there was lot of biodiversity or diversity in crops uh, before the green revolution so after the green revolution for the purpose of we can say food security we have started monocropping 
and we have started extensively growing okay uh, single variety of crops so because of that nowadays the biodiversity of the crops has been affected we can say so and also before green revolution india was also known for we can say organic farming the chemical fertilizers and the pesticides they were almost absent in india so but after the introduction of the green revolution uh, for that matter we have our own reserves the major concern at that time was to uh, have food security so food was very scarce in that time so there were uh, we can say deaths people were uh, dying because of hunger not uh, non availability of food grains so this story uh, you might be knowing during the 1960s and 70s so because of that reason we had to brought in green revolution uh, ms swaminathan also you know so <coughs> we can say he is the father of the green revolution so because of his work we could achieve self sufficiency now in the food grains but there are also some adverse impacts of green revolution right that this is about variety of crops uh, earlier there are uh, n number of varieties were there however with the we can say selective and the monocropping the diversity in the crops is decreasing right next is predominance of food crops this also we know so it is we can say uh, very much correlate with the uh, subsistence agriculture so when people are uh, uh, doing subsistence agriculture they are earning their livelihood especially needs of the food from the agriculture so generally they tend to grow the food crops only so whatever the food that is uh, that is being produced they will consume that food right so uh, of late there has a big a decline in the share of the land dedicated to food crops due to various commercial interests so some people have started growing commercial crops also but still the predominance of food crops is being maintained next one is seasonal patterns so india is known for seasonal cropping there are three seasons we have already studied that is kharif season so generally uh, it it it, uh, it it comes during the we can say later part of the summer and uh, rainy season next is uh, rabi crop so generally it falls in the months of winter months it falls in the months of winter season next one is zaid so this is we can say late winter to early summer late winter to early summer so generally we have in india three seasons all right so each season has its own peculiar we can say crops so when we when we see the kharif season rice is predominantly grown rice and other crops like sugarcane maize they are grown when it comes to rabi season wheat is predominantly grown when when we come to zaid vegetables vegetables are grown extensively and also some kind of fruit fruits like watermelon etc they are grown in the zaid season so this is about the seasons of agricultural seasons in india right so now we have come to the main part of our discussion that is we can say types of crops or we can say major crops major crops so mostly this is a factual part factual part so here for every crop you have to remember or focus on uh, majorly two or three areas one is the conditions required for that crop the climatic conditions we can say and also the second one is the areas where it is grown so try to focus on these two areas when you study about the different types of crops in india right so majorly it is predominantly from here uh, on it is a factual we can say factual uh, we can say you have to uh, remember the factual information so please try to remember uh, and focus right the first crop is first we uh, we see some food grains or we can say food crops food grain crops so here on that first one is rice so it is the one of the most important food crops in india because majority of the people are uh, are 
they consume rice so it is one of the important uh, crops in india right so the conditions that are suitable for rice cultivation are uh, temperature is range uh, that is ranging between 22 to 32 degree centigrade right uh, it is uh, suitable for cultivation of rice rainfall so adequate rainfall is vital for uh, 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 rice cultivation so region with a rainfall ranging between 150 to 300 centimeter they are most suitable so in areas like punjab haryana and western uttar pradesh where the rainfall is insufficient that is less than 100 centimeters canal irrigation provided here canal and now the most predominant we can say irrigation is tubal irrigation so as you all know this is also i mean the tubal we can say tube wells that are dug for uh, flooding the rice fields so this has become the predominant choice so because of this reason also the ground water here is over exploited in these regions Punjab, Haryana and Western Uttar Pradesh so I mean the ground water levels have been da dangerously depleted so the region is facing a lot of ecological consequences so we will study this in the uh, adverse impacts of the green revolution when we discuss the mains related topics right soil so rice cultivation adapts to varied soil conditions but it flourishes best in deep clayey and loamy soils it is primarily cultivated in plain areas but also thrives in unique environments such as below sea level uh, this is a variety kutanad variety that is there in kerala so it can survive in these kind of areas also right hill terraces also in the northern region of uh, uh, i mean in the northern states like uh, himachal and uttarakhand also it is being adopted and uh, in valleys of kashmir also it is grown so it is adopted to diverse conditions diverse conditions however the plains plains and especially the alluvial soils they are uh, more suitable for cultivation of rice so it is a we can say rice cultivation he heavily relies on the manual labor uh, for we can say transplant uh, transplantation of rice and also uh, in subsistence agriculture uh, for the we can say harvesting also we need uh, intensive manual labor right so which are uh, these uh, processes that are involved in the we can say the cultivation of paddy they cannot be mechanized that easily right so still manual labor is very very important when it comes to the cultivation of rice distribution this is important so it spans across various states of india production is majorly production uh, major producing states are tamil nadu west bengal andhra pradesh bihar jharkhand uttarakhand and chhattisgarh punjab odisha uttar pradesh karnataka so many states they are producing right assam and maharashtra so now we state uh, recently telangana also uh, in the last three to four years it has majorly earlier cotton was the major crop here now after the we can say uh, well uh, good performance of the monsoons here in this particular state the major crop i mean major area now has been again shifted to rice cultivation so major it has also become one of the major states that uh, i mean that is producing paddy right so here in the map you can see the uh, paddy crop or rice crop all right next important crop is wheat we can say it is the second most important crop in india it is also a food crop highly consumed by people in india especially in the northern and the northwestern part of india <coughs> So it is the second most important food food crop in India after rice. Right. Temperature required is so it ranges. The ideal temperature required is 10 to 15 degree centigrade. So because of this reason, it is a winter crop. Winter crop in India. Right. So however at the sowing and harvesting type temperatures are required are 21 degrees to 26 uh, uh, we can say degree centigrade so during the growth of the crop the uh, 
the ideal temperature is 10 to 15 degree centigrade so winter crop is uh, grown generally in early winters where the temperature is between 21 to 26 uh, degree centigrade so in the peak winters during the we can say december and january the winter crop will be going so again when it when in the months of we can say february and march the temperature again will increase to 21 to 25 degree centigrade in that range the temperature will be there so during that period it will be harvested right so when it's when we see the you can say rainfall it flourishes in the rain regions where annual average annual rainfall is 75 degree uh, 75 centimeters however uh, in the upper limit for wheat cultivation uh, the re requirement of rainfall is 100 centimeters right so wherever the rainfall is uh, we can say less than 75 centimeters we can say the irrigation support is being irrigation support is being uh, provided so frost during the flowering and the hailstorms during the ripening the uh, season these pose significant threats to we can say wheat production in india right soil when we see the wheat can adapt to various soils uh, va various soil types well drained fertile loamy and clayey loamy soils they are optimal Plains are provide uh, plains provide ideal conditions for wheat production. Right. Uh, so labor, if you see, wheat cultivation is highly mechanized, as you all know, in Punjab and Haryana regions, and uh, requiring significantly less labor when compared to rice cultivation. Right. Next uh, important, uh, we can say distribution. If you see, important aspect about wheat cultivation. Major states are Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Maharashtra. So Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana, these states, they collectively contribute to over 66% of the total wheat production in the country. So the reason you know very well, it is because of the grain revolution in these three states. Right. So here you can see the wheat crop. Next, another important we can say category of food crops, those are millets. So you know very well that now government of India is actively promoting the, we can say consumption of millets because of the rich nutrients and the micronutrients that are available in the millets. So they are being promoted on, under the Sri Anna under the name of Sri Anna. Right. <coughs> so millets are short duration warm weather crops primarily used for both food and fodder. Right. So they are sown during the Kharif season May and August and harvested in October November. Right. So with uh, the they are predominantly consumed by poorer populations. Uh, because of the we can say for nutrient uh, nut uh, for nutrition good nutrients they poor people dependent on the millets right so they play a crucial role in india's agriculture so as you all know because of the we can say changing lifestyles and the changed food habits the government has we can say identified the or realized the importance of millets and it is actively promoting the consumption of millets across the population categories uh, whether it is rich class or poor class uh, whatever the class may be they have a lot of benefits so the government is actively promoting the consumption of millets right so temperature so millets thrive thrive on the regions with high temperatures typically ranging between 27 degrees to 32 degrees so Rainfall, if you see, they are known as the dry land crops. So they require moderate rainfall ranging from 50 to 100 centimeters. Right. So basically, they are grown in the arid regions, arid and semi arid regions. Right. If you see the soil type, they are less sensitive to soil deficiencies and can be grown in various soil types, including inferior alluvial or loamy soils distribution 
jowar and bajra they are cultivated in both north and south india while ragi is uh, primarily con- uh, concentrated in south india right jowar and bajra these are grown in states like madhya pradesh gujarat rajasthan maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh haryana punjab ragi cultivation is mainly found in karnataka tamil nadu and andhra pradesh right so this is about the millets so here you can say pearl miller sorry pearl millet in the image or we also call it as bajra right so this is the bajra crop next another important food crop category food uh, crop category is pulses so pulses uh, include a number of crops which are mostly leguminous and provide invaluable proteins uh, to the vegetarian population of india so they have fewer sources of proteins in comparison to those who consume meat and fish right they also serve as the excellent forage and the grain concentrates in the cattle feed right the one of the important feature is they have the capacity to fix atmospheric atmospheric nitrogen in the soil and are normally rotated with other crops to maintain uh, and restore soil fertility right so there is a lot of variety of pulse varieties are there in india they are gram tur or arhar uh, urad uh, moong dal is there masoor is there kulti matter so many kind of uh, pulses are there in india right so earlier uh, before we can say 4 to 5 years back india was deficient in pulse production we were importing uh, some uh, <coughs> uh, lactans of pulses from other countries especially african countries so with mozambique mozambique we have a special agreement for importing a dedicated amount of pulses from uh, from the mozambique however with the uh, changed preferences and also because of the manoeuvres in msp minimum uh, minimum support price that is guaranteed by we can say government the pulses production has increased in india pulses production has increased so we can see a self sufficiency or we can say we are able to produce sufficient pulses that are required for our own consumption right so in pulses one of the major uh, we can say category is gram so here we will understand the conditions about the gram so it is also known as chickpea it is a vital crop in india providing valuable prote- proteins to the vegetarian population right so temperature if you see the ideal temperature required for it is 20 degree centigrade to 25 degree centigrade rainfall is required is 40 to 45 cm so it is majorly a dry land crop because the temperature required is very very sorry the rainfall required is very very less soil if you see uh, this i mean loamy soil is well suited for them contributing to its widespread cultivation across various regions D- distribution if you see uh, it appears or suitable in the many parts of the country uh, the majority of the production it is coming from five states those states are madhya pradesh uttar pradesh rajasthan haryana and maharashtra so here you can see the chickpea plants so green chana Uh, you might be i mean people will be selling green chana on the roads so that is nothing but the uh, we can say gram cultivation so when they are um, they mature they become the gram right now we will see the commercial crops right so commercial crops are those which are grown for sale either in the form of semi processed or a fully processed from right <coughs> first and major important crop uh, commercial crop is sugar sugar cane right so it is a vital commercial crop plays a crucial role in various industries serving as the primary source of sugar good kandasari etc so the temperature required is ideal temperature is 
that is required between 21 degree centigrade to 27 degree centigrade rainfall is the rainfall ranging from 75 to 150 centi uh, centimeters is favorable soil if we see it can adapt to various soil types but thrives best in deep rich loamy soils that retains moisture well so ideal soil conditions include richness in nitrogen calcium and phosphorus with a ph level neither too acidic nor too alkaline light right flat plain and level plateaus they are advantageous for irrigation and transportation of transportation to sugar mills so as you all know sugarcane is a food loose crop so once it is harvested it has to be quickly transported to we can say sugar mills sugar mills for crushing because if it is delayed the sugar content in the sugar cane that will get reduced right so you as you all know the maharashtra region one of the we can say rain deficit regions because of the we can say socio-political conditions the sugar cane is most cultivated there in the one of the mo most rain deficient areas however sugar cane as you all know it is water is pretty much required for this crop water is pretty much required for this crop so because of the socio-political conditions it is being predominantly grown in one of the rain deficient areas that is Maratwada region uh, in the Maharashtra so there are uh, many socio-political problems with respect to this cultivation in Maharashtra so when we study the mains uh, we will discuss in more deep, uh, in some more detail about the issues associated with the sugarcane crop in Maharashtra right labor so sugarcane cultivation it is a labor intensive crop requiring ample human hands at every stage including sowing hoeing, weeding, irrigation, cutting and transporting of sugarcane to factories. Right. Distribution if you see, the India holds large area under sugarcane cultivation globally, ranking as the second largest producer after Brazil. Right. So it is in India, uh, if, if you see the cultivation, it is, uh, I mean, located in certain geographical, distinct geographical, uh, we can say, regions so the regions are one is satlaj ganga plain from punjab to bihar according accounting for 51 percent of the total area and 60 percent of the country's total production right so the black soil belt from maharashtra to tamil nadu along the eastern slopes of western guards so this is also another important uh, region next is coastal andhra pradesh and the krishna river valley so these are the three regions where the distinct sugarcane cultivating belts are we can say located right so this belt is majorly problematic especially the region in maharashtra because maharashtra is a rain deficient uh, we can say state however sugarcane is being extensively cultivated there so it is leading to lot of problems so when it comes to sugarcane there is no msp uh, but there is a fair and remunerative price remunerative price so uh, indirect directly or indirectly through this mechanism fair and remunerative prices the some amount of we can say income is assured for the farmers who are growing sugarcane so because of this reason though it is ecologically not suitable and it is a water guzzling crop farmers are still practicing uh, production of the sugarcane because some type of price support is assured for them in the form of fair and remunerative price right next another important uh, we can say the crop commercial crop in india is cotton crop so it is the most important fiber crop grown not only in india but also across the world so it serves as the vital raw material file textile industry as you all know right if you see the temperature the ideal temperature is between 21 to 30 degree centigrade right rainfall uh, the ideal rainfall we can say 50 to 100 centimeters so rain uh, the cotton is also it is a long duration crop 
it is a long long duration crop so it requires at least 210 frost free days annually right so this is important if frost is there what happens the cotton bulb or we can say cotton fiber it will be damaged so because of this reason it requires at least 210 days of frost free days annually so it also requires moderate range of rainfall ranging between 50 to 100 cm however irrigation is necessary in regions with the rainfall below 50 cm right soil so cotton cultivation is closely associated with the black soils black soils that are there in the dakkan and malwa plateaus so because of this reason also we also call the black soils as black cotton soils block black cotton soils because they are most suited for the cultivation of crops cotton crop in india right additionally it also grows well in alluvial soils of satluj ganga plain and red laterite soils of the peninsular region also labor so cotton picking remains a labor intensive process as mechanization for picking has not been fully implemented right so therefore significant amount of cheap and efficient labor is required for uh, uh, picking uh, the cotton bulbs so because of this reason child labor is predominant so the for picking the uh, cotton fiber the tender fingers are required active fingers are required so because of the reason uh, this reason many number of children are being engaged uh, in the cotton harvesting we can say so the children are engaged for plucking, plucking the cotton fiber so child uh, labor also remains a major concern in the cotton harvesting distribution if we see So India holds the largest area under cotton cultivation and ranks as the third largest producer globally following China and USA. So after China and USA, uh the India is the third country in the total production. Right. Within the country four states Punjab, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Haryana they contribute to two thirds of the total area and the production of the cotton. So however the southern states like Maharashtra and uh, telangana even andhra pradesh karnataka they are also start they have also started extensively growing cotton right so here you can see the cotton crop so these why white uh, bulbs you can see that is the cotton fiber so it will be plugged right next important commercial crop is oil seeds so it is one of the important groups of commercial crops in india india has the largest area and production of oil seeds in the world right so one of the important uh, oil seed crops ground groundnut we will understand the conditions required for the groundnut so it is the most important oil seed in india it plays a crucial role in various industries providing oil for consumption it also serving as raw material for products like hydrogenated oils paints varnishes soaps and lubricants so try to remember these industries also these products also so oil serves as a primary raw material for all these products right so temperature suitable is 20 to 30 degree centigrade rainfall is between 50 to 75 cm so it is also predominantly a dry dry area crop or arid area crop right right it has highly susceptible to frost prolonged drought and continuous rain and stagnant water so these are not ideal conditions for uh, groundnut so therefore dry winters are necessary during ripening right so soil uh, suitable soil is well drained light sandy loam loams red and yellow and the black soils are well suited for groundnut cultivation so if we see the distribution it accounts for uh, about half of the major oil seeds produced in the country so india is the largest producer of groundnut globally contributing to about one third of the world's total production if we see the states andhra pradesh tamil nadu gujarat they are the three major states 
that are producing groundnut accounting for about 60% of the total cultivation another 30% comes from states like maharashtra karnataka and odisha so here you can see this is the groundnut uh, crop so this is the groundnut next another important category of crops that is those are plantation crops so these are also come under the commercial crops in that uh, two or three important crops are there like tea co uh, <coughs> tea coffee and uh, rubber is al rubber are also there however we will understand about the first we will understand about tea so tea it is a renowned product in india famous it is famous for its tea gardens notably in assam and darjeeling west bengal and also in some regions of tamil nadu like uh, tamil nadu also there are tea plantations right right so tea plantation in india it can be traced back to the british era in 1823 that was uh, uh, however the wild tea plantations were also discovered in the hilly and forested areas of assam right temperature is so the ideal temperature is between 20 to 30 degree centigrade right so ek extremes in temperature either rising above 35 degree centigrade or dropping below 10 degree centigrade that can be harmful for tea bushes and the leaves so as you all know tea is harvested from the leaves of the tree plant sorry tea plant rainfall so the tea cultivation thrives well in good amount of rainfall typically ranging between 150 to 300 cm annually distributed evenly throughout the year so long dry spells they are detrimental to tea cultivation soil so tea bushes grow well in well drained deep uh, friable loamy soils however virgin forest soils rich in humus and iron content they are also considered optimal for tea plantation so tea plants are uh, tea plants are uh, shade loving and benefit from the planting alongside shady trees so big big trees will be there so under them under the shades of those big trees the tree uh, we can say plantations uh, sorry tea plantations will be grown labor is cheap and efficient labor is essential for plucking the tea leaves so for tea production due to the labor intensive nature of tasks involved in the tea cultivation so basically to pluck the tea leaves like the tea leaves cheap and efficient labor is very much required distribution if you see assam leads the production in india contributing to over 50% of the total country's tea production right so tea is also predominantly grown on the hill slopes of uh, bordering the brahmaputra and uh, uh, surma valleys in assam west bengal follows as the second largest producer with the tea cultivation concentrated in districts like darjeeling siliguri jalpaiguri and kuch bihar districts tamil nadu ranks the third in the tea production with the growing areas mainly restricted in the nilgiri hills right here you can see the tree plantation right so these type of slopy areas they are well suited for the cultivation of tree which are well drained right next important crop we also call them as beverage crops so coffee is the second most important beverage in india so coffee it is originally from ethiopia was introduced to india by baba budan in 17th century with large coffee estates established in the hills of the western ghats by british planters right temperature so the temperature ideal is 15 degrees centigrade to 28 degrees centigrade it is typically grown under the shades of the trees just like the uh, tea plantations so the shade of the big trees very much essential right so these shades protect the plants from strong sunlight extreme conditions such as temperature above 30 degrees centigrade frost and snowfall they are harmful to coffee cultivation so dry weather is necessary during the ripening of berry so basically coffee is harvested from the berries coffee berries so coffee beans you might have seen so when it comes to tea 
the tea leaves are harvested leaves are used as a, i mean tea product so when it comes to coffee coffee berries or coffee beans are the uh, major product right if you see the soil well drained rich friable loamy soil containing a good deal of humus and minerals like iron and calcium are ideal for coffee cultivation proper soil management including manure manuring is essential for uh, replenish, replenishing of cotton uh, sorry coffee crop so labor when it comes to similar to tea coffee cultivation also requires significant amount of cheap and skilled labor for various tasks such as sowing transplanting pruning plucking drying grading and packing of coffee beans distribution if you see karnataka kerala and tamil nadu they are the main states for coffee production in india with the coffee plantations located predominantly predominantly in the hills of the western ghats right so here in the image you can see the coffee berries right so when they are harvested and processed the coffee beans will come out all right so this is about the different types of crops uh, that are predominantly grown in india so they are very very important try to focus on them right now we will see some of the previous uh, questions that are uh, that have been asked from this topic first question it is asked in uh, 2021 the question is uh, among the following which uh, which is the least water efficient crop so the options are sugarcane sunflower pearl millet red gram so as you can see all these sugar uh, sunflower pearl millet and red gram especially the pearl millet it is a dry uh, dry land area crop red gram and sunflower also they do not require much water require much crop however sugarcane is a i mean sugarcane requires lot of water so it is the least water efficient crop so sugarcane lot of water is required we have understood so i have given the case of maharashtra also especially the maratwata region so it is a <coughs> vidarbha and maratwata regions so they are water deficient regions however still the uh, sugarcane is being grown there so because of that reason the area is witnessing lot of ground water issues and ecological problems also so uh, i mean the sugarcane requires lot of water so we can say it is the least water efficient crop among the given crops next question <coughs> here the description of a crop is given you have to identify the crop so the options given are cotton jute sugarcane tea uh, let's study the uh, the question is asked in 2020 uh, the question we will uh, we will read the question Uh, the crop is uh, subtropical in nature a hard frost injurious to it it requires at least 210 frost free days and 50 to 100 cm rainfall for its growth a light well drained soil capable of retaining moisture is ideally suited for the crop cultivation of the crop which of the following is the that crop so we have studied these conditions frost is injurious to the crop it requires 210 frost free days and uh, 50 to 100 cm of rainfall is required so the crop is nothing but cotton so the conditions uh, for the rest of the crops are different so the correct option is option a cotton crop all right so these type of questions can be asked uh, so be ready and be thorough with the subject so this is uh, it for today thank you thank you thank you for joining the lecture see you next time until then have a good day